I was ready to quit by about um, 1960 or 61. I had been doing it for 20 years, and I said to my wife, look, I'm sure there's something I can do. I'll try to write a novel or something. And she said, Stan, if you want to quit, why don't you first do one comic book the way you'd like to do it for a slightly older audience, write it the way you feel like writing it, get it out of your system. The worst that can happen is you'll be fired, but you want to quit anyway. When Joan finally said, why don't you do one book the way you'd like to do it, it was like a light bulb exploded over my head. I felt, well, at last, at least I'll get it out of my system, and then I'll quit or be fired. Martin said to me, why don't you do a book with a bunch of heroes? So I figured, okay, I'll get a group of heroes, but this time I wanted to do them my way, and I wanted to write things to appeal to older people too. If I had a superpower, there's no way I would wear a mask and not want people to know who I was. I'd want everybody to know, look at me, I can do things you can't do. I'm better than you are. And here's my name, if you don't believe it. It was right there in that moment, with Fantastic Four number one, that the Marvel Age of Comics started, and that what Stan Lee has become started. 1961. Now there is a notable year. John Kennedy became president. Alan Shepard became the first American in space. The bikini became fashionable. And Marvel Comics made its debut. So saw these comics that were unlike anything that I'd seen before. The, the pages rippled with energy. Comic book superheroes up until 1961 were cardboard characters. They didn't really have a sense of humor. There was no texture to it. There were no subplots. We try to write stories we would enjoy, and apparently there are enough people in the world who have the same tastes. Mm -hmm. I hate to say that, I'd like to think my taste is far <laughs> better, but apparently everybody must have pretty much the same taste because the books sell pretty well. All of a sudden, Stan superheroes were dealing with angst, self-torment, anguish. This was really the first time that an added dimension of personality had been brought in to the superhero. Stan was able to tap into something where you became interested in the character as opposed to the costume. Wait a minute. They're fighting with each other. They don't particularly like each other. They don't like their powers. They think it's like a curse, not something good that happened. One character, The Thing, who's uh, one of the most popular ones, uh, the first time he wore a superhero outfit in the street, he reacted in a way I've always felt a character in a book should react. Instead of taking it for granted, he said, I feel like a nut in an outfit like this. People are looking at me. You mm -hmm. see? And we had stories where they were evicted from their headquarters because they had lost a lot of money in the stock market and they couldn't pay their rent. Things that had never happened to superheroes before. Mm -hmm. See, another thing, I didn't see any reason for our superheroes, such as the Fantastic Four, to live in cities like Metropolis or Gotham City. I figured, hell, why can't they live in New York, you know? I knew New York, so I made it New York. I could write comfortably about New York. And when they went to the movies, why do they go to the Bijou Theater? Why do they go to the Radio City Music Hall? And uh, when the Human Torch, who was a teenager, Johnny Storm, when he wanted a sports car, he wouldn't buy a whiz-bang V8. I got him a Chevy Corvette and let So again, I tried to make things as, um, as realistic as possible. 